Distinguished Judiciary Committee. Um, uh, what, what I want to do first is introduce the persons that I have with me. I have Mr. Marcus Coleman, whose uh, cousin was CJ, and so he has the background of specifically what happened in that particular case. And also, I have uh, Jason Samuels, the prosecuting attorney. Right, and um, uh, as some of you may know, that I put this bill in on last year, and it was House <coughs> Bill 765, and it passed out of a uh, committee. All the committee process went through the House, passed out of the House, went through all the stuff in the Senate, and when it got to the floor of the Senate, um, in my opinion, it seemed to have gutted the bill or what we were, our intent was. And so during the interim, uh, we had some opportunity to work with the um, prosecuting attorneys and to come up with a, a House Bill 88, which we believe um, will do what we're trying to do in terms of making sure uh, that we modernize Georgia statutes. This particular statute on um, hit and run has not been updated since 1999. And, um, and some of you may know that on TV every day almost, every other day, there's something in the news regarding someone who's been a victim of hit and run, whether they're a car to get another car or whether they're uh, a person, a person riding their own business, walking on the road, and a car comes out from nowhere, hits them. Sometimes they, they had cases on TV where the person stopped, looks at the person, and then pulls in the door. And they believe that uh, even though we can't just all the way regulate people's behavior, uh, at the same time, we do think that uh, some compassion should be shown in these cases where sometimes if the person who hit the person the first time it stopped, we believe that um, in many cases that person's life could have been saved. I'm fin I would like to give you a little summary that I had wrote up by someone in the legislative council. And if you would allow Mr. Marcus to sort of tell about specifically about CJ's case. And, um, if I could, I, I will uh, ask your um, your indulgence. Could you, um, because there may be some questions, there may be an opportunity to kind of hear some more. No problem. If you could limit your presentation to two minutes for us, mm -hmm. and then there may be some, some give and take throughout mm -hmm. the presentation. So, welcome. Yes, well, glad to be before you guys again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Marcus Coleman. My little cousin is Charlie Enrique Jones III, a.k.a. CJ. Uh, ten years, uh, January, made ten years of his tragic death. Uh, he was uh, walking along a, a street and uh, intersection of Rio Montana and Piedmont, Rio Montana Drive and Piedmont Avenue, uh, struck by one vehicle, uh, thought to have had broken limbs and knocked unconscious and literally uh, run over by a truck towing a, bo towing a boat. The first vehicle did not stop. The second vehicle stopped on top of his body. Uh, we have had all kind of uh, issues dealing with a uh, uh, Cobb County PD. Uh, he was mislabeled in the morgue, uh, tagged John Doe, even though he had a cell phone on him and a, uh, his identification on his person. We have since had apologies from the medical examiner's office and uh, the PD. We have worked with Joanne Burrell out there, Commissioner Joanne Burrell. We have since uh, worked with Georgia Power and added extra lighting in that area. Uh, this 10-year anniversary of January, we were given a proclamation on behalf of the Board of Commissioners of Cobb County. Uh, we were pushing for this because the lack of respect for life uh, if the individual who stopped, uh, if the individual who did not stop, if they were ever brought to justice under the current statute, they would literally face a misdemeanor. We think that is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I will pause on this. Uh, hopefully I do have more time, but uh, this body, uh, uh, the, the Dome passed an excellent legislation dealing with hands-free. Uh, it is my understanding that smart cars are getting smarter, smartphones are getting smarter, and drivers are getting dumber. We feel like that this body uh, this dome needs to create some legislation that will put a harsher penalty out that would prevent, hopefully, uh, the tragedy that has happened to my family. <coughs> Thank you for your presentation. Appreciate you being willing to come here and yep. share with us. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask, I do have a question uh, for Pat just to help us frame this. <coughs> um, what's the current framework for prison run in Georgia? Yes, sir. Uh, could, you, could you draw a distinction for us legally between hit and run as they exist today and what's being proposed? Yes, sir, I can. And I, I thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee uh, for the attention. Uh, as you're aware, sir, hit and run is presently a crime in the state of Georgia. It's codified under the Bishop of Georgia 
of Section 20-6-270. Presently, and what this bill seeks to address, is there is no distinction uh, in punishment and treatment uh, between a party uh, that causes a crash and flees a scene and a party involved in a crash and flees a scene. Uh, if I can, by way of illustration, uh, uh, Representative Reeves, Chairman Reeves and I uh, were assistant DAs together in the Cotton DA's office, so hopefully we won't mind me using him in my hypothetical, but let's say that we are involved in a crash together. I am driving, he is driving. He is responsible for the crash. In other words, his driving behavior is the reason that the crash occurred. I have knowledge that serious injury resulted from that crash, and I flee the scene. Uh, I am guilty of the offense of hit and run. I'm sorry, it was just for your hypothetical. Yes, sir. Were you in the car with him or no, another, no, motorist no. in another car? Yes, sir. We are driving separate vehicles. Uh, I have knowledge that serious injury resulted from that crash, and I flee this. So he hits, heaven forbid, um, our uh, bill sponsor here, third party. Or he hits me. Okay. He crashes into my car. Uh, because of that crash, I have knowledge. I knew or should have known that a serious injury resulted from that crash, and I flee this. And you can use your imagination why somebody. Uh, not responsible for a crash and being seen for having a suspended license. Maybe I'm in possession of something that I would prefer the police not find out that I am in possession of and I leave. Uh, I don't summon help. I don't do the very basic things that we expect of drivers involved in a crash. Uh, I, I don't try to give aid to the victim. I don't remain at the scene to provide my information to the investigating officer, my insurance information. I just leave. Uh, I committed the offense of hit and run at that point, even though I was not the party responsible. My exposure uh, under that scenario would be one to five. It's a felony if I know that serious injury has occurred. Um, likewise, the same, the same is true. If I am the person responsible for the crash in that hypothetical, so I have crashed into Representative Reeves and I know that serious injury has resulted from that crash and I flee, my exposure is the same, the one to five. What this bill does is it, I think, highlights what we would all agree to that if a person is the party responsible for the crash, if my driving behavior has caused the crash, I have an even higher responsibility and obligation to remain at the scene and do the right thing. To summon help, to evade the victim if possible, to remain for the police to come, identify myself, provide my insurance information. And what this bill does is, if I am the party responsible for the crash and the state can prove that beyond a reasonable doubt, you should have known that serious injury was the result of that crash, and I leave anyway. My exposure now becomes one to ten, as opposed to one to five. Uh, I think it's important to, to point out that this does not set a mandatory minimum. Uh, it does not restrict the discretion of the sentencing judge at all. A judge is still available to sentence anywhere on that range of one to ten. A judge can issue a sentence in prison, prison and probation, a mixture of the two. A judge could still have the authority to suspend the sentence based on. Uh, the facts presented to that sentencing judge and what deems appropriate. Uh, but it does give that judge a higher sentencing authority uh, if they're faced with a driver who is responsible for the crash and then fails to live up to their very basic obligation. Thank you. Great presentation. Chair recognizes uh, Chairman Extration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A uh, question for the sponsor or for PAC. I see the word accident used a few times in here. Can you, can you tell me why 